Hey, what's up guys? It's Jeff with Panini Going Direct and I I'm super excited for our guest here today. We have from the UFC, Matt Danger. Sorry, probably just blew out our sound guy's ears there. Schnell, what's up, dude? Good to be here, man. Really excited. Love, love Panini, love cards. So this is a dream come true for me. Well, so, and he's not just giving lip service there, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been to Matt's social media accounts, he is a legit card guy. So I was thinking earlier, like, you were the perfect guest for the show. You're, you're an athlete, you're a professional athlete, but also you speak the card geek lingo, which is perfect. Absolutely, and I think a lot of times guys do just give a lip service, like, hey, I collected when I was a kid, I'm a huge collector, but I'm, I'm really a collector. I'm a, I'm a true part of this community. I've got breakers and you know, I've got a great relationship with my LCS and I've met people through the card community. They're, they're now fans of fighting and everything in between. So, I mean, I, I love this community. Well, and you have a, a big fight coming up on February 12th uh, in Houston, UFC 271. How, how's everything going? Everything's going good, uh, as good as it could be. You know, it's always a struggle. Fight camp's hard. Uh, weight's got to come down. You got to kind of beat yourself up. But uh, here we are. Everything's humming. We're, we're hitting on all cylinders. Couldn't really ask for it to go any better. My weight's good. Uh, I feel good about everything. I've uh, taken taken some damage this camp. I don't know if you can see I chipped a tooth. Looks pretty good to me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have the UFC fix it at, 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 as this fight wraps. But uh, yeah, everything's been good. Uh, I feel good fighting a really tough competitor. So I, I look forward to the challenge. So uh, Matt, I first learned about you, and I, I told you so over a DM exchange. But my wife and I. I, I'm fortunately married to a woman who loves watching fights, so I actually have somebody to watch those late night UFC tournaments with. Yeah, I, it, I'm very lucky, shout out. Um, but so we were watching a show on MTV a few years back called Caged, and they, they it was like a reality show following some MMA fighters, um, and there were a couple big standouts from the show, and one was this dude named Danger who was laying a whooping on a bunch of people. So what, what was it like being on that show? Man? Hence hence Danger Caged. I, I don't think a lot of people know where my Instagram and Twitter handle have, uh, came from, but that's where it originated, Danger Caged. I was a part of MTV's Cage, what was that? Uh, we filmed that in 2011, it aired in 2012. What an experience, you know, experience that you can't buy. and. Obviously, uh, it's come full circle. I'm in the UFC. My buddy Tony Kelly also eventually made it to the UFC and no he's kidding. doing really well. So uh, yeah, it, it, it was it was great. Essentially, I've been in the MMA spotlight since I was a, a kid, and uh, it's come full circle. I'm here. I didn't cut any corners. I, I earned my way into the UFC. I'm now a top 10 guy in the world, and uh, we did it the hard way. You know, we didn't cut any cut any corners. I did the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, cut my teeth in the UFC and uh, here we are it's it's an incredible thing man so you had to you had to really earn your way in going through caged essentially was you know kind of a, a training ground but then going through ultimate fighter man that's that's huge now what I will say is caged helped me with the media aspect of it as far as like I've you know, hundred. We filmed Caged over a six-month period. Okay. So I'm talking hundreds of hours in front of the cameras, doing interviews and things wow. of that nature. MTV also provided a little bit of uh, social media and media training for me. So, like I said, uh, really, what an opportunity. What what a great thing. And I think it it just adds on to the story. And there are a lot of people who continue to reach out to me, and they're like, "Dude, I followed you since Caged, and that means the world to me. It means the world to me." Well, um, as far as that show goes, you were you were a likable personality, and my wife and I were so excited when we saw you in the UFC. It was like, look at this guy! Like he he made it. That it felt kind of like we are a part of that journey. And I, I tell you what, too, it it wasn't it wasn't seamless. It wasn't a straight line uh, because I, I did caged. I I finished my amateur career uh, October of 2011 and it wasn't until 10 months later 11 months later that I made my professional debut and the reason there was such a layoff is because nobody wanted the kid from caged mm. nobody wanted the kid from MTV and, uh, and Mick, why was that 
I think there, there was a negative connotation behind the show within the, the hardcore MMA community, and things have come full circle now. But, uh, you know, a, a man named Mick Maynard took a chance on me, signed me as an amateur, uh, begrudgedly so, signed me as an amateur, <laughs> and uh, I won him over, and he's now the UFC matchmaker. No Mick kidding. Maynard, no kidding. So uh, it, it's just crazy how it goes, and, of course, I'm thankful to the UFC. I'm very thankful to Mick Maynard because – uh, I didn't have a great start in his promotion. I started out, I think I was two and two in Legacy. Okay. And Mick stuck with me. I went on a seven fight run. I, I won the Legacy title. So this, this man knows very much of who I am, my mental makeup. And I think uh, I think that's been a part of my, my story and, and my coming of age. And I'm a real, I'm a real, I'm a real one. You know, I'm a real one. Love it, man. I love it. It comes through. Uh, where'd the nickname Danger come from? So the nickname Danger, it's not as cool as it sounds. It's actually because I was a, a spaz as a, as a young man. And when I, when I first walked into the gym, it was literally like, hey, if you want to uh, get your teeth knocked out, go with this goofball. He's a spaz. Danger. Danger. That's that's what it was. That's how it originated. So it wasn't because I was whipping everybody. It was literally because I, I wasn't great at drilling. I wasn't great at the techniques. But over time, I figured that stuff out. So that's that's where danger came from. It's funny. I've, I've heard uh, a lot of jujitsu guys talk about like it's way more dangerous to roll with like somebody who's new versus somebody who's crazy dangerous like a black belt. Right because they understand how to not hurt someone essentially where the new guys could you know mistakenly hurt you and i was a little guy but i was a decent athlete i played ball i was always i've always been a strong kid so i think a lot of times guys would grab a hold of me like i'll go with this little guy and but you know <laughs> end up knocking your teeth through your lips unfortunately <laughs> well so uh, what is it like you, you went through this this long journey to get to the UFC. You said it wasn't easy. It wasn't just given to you. You earned every every step of the way. What was it like when you first signed that contract? I'll tell you what, confetti did not fall from the sky because <laughs> <laughs> I took my UFC debut on six days notice. Oh my gosh. And I fought a man named Rob Font. Okay, and I know Rob the name. Rob Font is a top five bantamweight in the world, a scary man, and, and I had to fight him at oh. 35. So. With less than a week notice. With less than a week notice, and uh, it was it was not the moment that I thought it would be. And I started my my UFC career as well, 0-2. I was 0-2 mm. in the UFC before I got my first win. I went on a four-fight win streak, um, and, and through that win streak, I, I accumulated enough notoriety to, to become a ranked fighter. But uh, I mean, it, it's, it's been tough. It's been a grind. It's not been seamless. I've cut no corners. And uh, like I said, yeah, I'm a real one. I've, I've done it uh, the hard way, the right way. Yeah, you earned it. Who, uh, who do you look up to? Like who are the uh, UFC greats in your book? So uh, I've, I've, I'm very good friends with Dustin Poirier, but if okay. I but if I were not friends with Dustin Poirier, he would still be my favorite fighter just because he's another guy that's done it the hard way and done it the right way. Carries himself with um, he, he's just such a respectful guy, and you know I admire him for a, a number of reasons, but carries himself with dignity, and that's the guys that I admire the most. They're not the guys that win the most or. Uh, put on the most exciting fights, though that doesn't hurt, but it's the ones that carry themselves with dignity. And uh, for me, that's that's what brings out uh, the the you know that's for me that's that's what makes me like guys the most is when they have to overcome true adversity and uh, come back, storm back, snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Those are the guys that I like to see. It's not the guys that just win all the time because we know oftentimes those guys they don't. Uh, they don't necessarily cultivate the whole uh, dynamic of being a good person along the way. Right. When all you do is win, it's hard to, uh, and, and even the people around you, when all you do is win, they don't treat you the same. It's, it's yeah. a different thing. So, uh, yeah, I would say Poirier. Poirier is definitely my favorite fighter, favorite fighter and a buddy of mine. Uh, so <clears throat> you talked about your record a little bit. You're currently 15 and six as a pro. 15 and five. 15 and five. Okay. The last one was turned to a no contest. Really? It sure was. 15 and five. That's, That's right. awesome. Yeah. 
What does it feel like to have your hand raised in the middle of the octagon? It feels good, you know, of course you work hard for it, but I, you know, talking to young guys coming up, I promise you it's no different from the regional show to the professional show. And that's, that's one thing I, I always try to tell these guys, these young guys coming up. Uh, there's a lot of young guys coming up that I, that I also admire, but I, also, I always try and let them know, you know, I won at every level, but I lost at every level too. And uh, losing is not a, a finality. Oftentimes it just means you need to make small adjustments. And uh, for me, that's, that's what I'm always trying to tell my guys, the guys that I take under my wing is, hey, it's gonna get rough. We, we gotta get out there and fight the tough fights and you should be challenged and you should come up short every now and then, but it does not mean that you're inadequate. It just means we gotta make adjustments. And I think oftentimes, I know I felt this way when I lose a fight in downtown Shreveport, Louisiana. It's like, bro, can you do this? But you can, I've done it, so here we are. And we've got another fight coming up in a couple of weeks, man. So you are, you're technically in camp right now. How like how stressful is the fight camp? Well, when you've been, I've been in a fight camp for 13 years now. <laughs> so this Good this one. such is my life. And people often ask me questions like, "Are you excited?" No, I'm not excited. At, at this point, it, it's another fight. I uh, I look forward to the opportunity to showcase my life's work because that's very much what it is. This is my life's work in real time, and. Uh, you know, this, this fight is big, of course, but 13 years of every fight has been the biggest fight of my life, so this, the, nothing new here. I'm about to fight the number four guy in the world, Alex Perez, a guy I've got a lot of respect for, a really tough guy, a uh, family man much like myself, and I'm gonna meet him in the middle, and we're gonna sort it out, and uh, we'll pick up the pieces where they lie afterwards, but I'm feeling good about things. Awesome, man. Well, I, I can imagine, uh, you know, coming up on a big fight, it could be kind of stressful. Do you ever find yourself dipping into your sports card collection to, to blow off some stress, maybe cracking a box? Absolutely, this is what I do to relieve stress. It's very much something that, you know, fighting fighting is my hobby, it's, it's my passion, it's my job, it's everything in between. So uh, there, there are few things that I can go to that really relieve any type of pressure in sports cards. That's exactly what it is. Video games and sports cards, uh, very much so. Very That's much a good so. combo, man. So I brought a box. You've probably seen this before. 2021 Chronicles. I thought, I mean, very appropriate for us to break a box like this. Have you opened this product at all? I've opened a lot of 2020 Chronicles. You have? All right, man. Well, dude, I, uh, I wasn't gonna let you drop by and not open some product with you. This is too cool of an opportunity for me, if nothing else, but hopefully, you know, we pull something cool too. So let's go. I'm gonna give you this side, or which side would you rather have? Let's let's do it like that. I think all right, all right, cool. Let it how it lies. So Matt, how long have you been collecting? Your whole life? I've been collect. I started collecting when I was 11 years old. So 2011, 2001, around okay, that time. Okay. And uh, I, I took some time off there for a little bit. I discovered the opposite sex girls and I kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know, around 15, 16, I kind of got out of the card game, met my wife, moved back to Houston, or moved to Houston about five years ago. And so in 2017, I'm a Saints fan. Okay. And the Saints drafted Alvin Kamara, Marshawn Lattimore, Ryan Ramchak, uh, Marcus Williams. They had yeah. what, what I thought the best draft class of all time. So I'm sitting in line at Target one day and just on a whim, buy a box of like like a blaster of optic. Sure. And right then and there, it, it, it all started back for me again. You remembered so, why you loved it so I much as a kid? why I loved it so much. I think a lot of people have that, that kind of come back after I, I had the same sort of uh, arc where I, you know, I, I started getting interested in girls and, and dating, and it was like sports cards just kind of took a backseat for a little bit. But then, you know, a little later in life, I came right back. There's so. a guy I collect, uh, Michael Chandler. So I'll hold that up and hold that just for a little bit so we can get that. A little Michael base, Chandler. Nice. base and Mike I Chandler. I think these are Michael Chandler rookies. Or is yep, that they sure yeah, are. the rated rookie? And I, I like Michael Chandler. He's always got great pictures of him holding the American flag, and I really enjoy that. And here, there's the hottest guy in the sport, right? The hottest guy in the in the card industry right now, Hazmat Chamaya. Yeah, I was gonna say. So this guy, he is. I want to say he's 11 and 0 right now. Maybe 10 and 0. 
but he's, uh, yeah, he's a scary dude. Wrestler, man. So your background is, are you, your background is jujitsu, right? Or do you have? I, st I started training everything at the same time. Okay, so good. I'm, I'm one of these guys who, uh, I'm probably the oldest of the generation that started everything at once. And I started training when I was 18. There's a nice Izzy Adesanya. He'll be headlining the the card I'm fighting. Yes. On. So I'm hoping to I'm hoping to get with Izzy and maybe break some cards with him on fight week. We'll see. Uh, I mean, yeah, happens. we would love that. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna try and hit up Izzy here. I'm a Israel Adesanya fan as well. So, uh, Jan, how do you pronounce his last name? Jan Blahovic. That's a Blahovich. nice. Blahovic. Yeah, that's so that's, that's, that's out of 49. It's got uh, some memorability and an auto on that. Former champion, he just lost to Glover Teixeira. Yeah, he is a monster. A monster. Dude, so what is it like, you have several sports cards of your own, what is it like pulling your own card out of a pack? It's great, it's great, and <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it's a weird thing because people are like, dude, you collect your own cards? I sure do, you know? <laughs> I'm a real collector. <clears throat> and I would say, I would imagine like if, if you had your own card, you might collect your own card. I can tell you for without a doubt, I would be buying up the uh, the Pack Geek rated rookie. Silver Francis Ngannou. Ooh, nice. Heavyweight champ of the world. That's really nice. Gosh, I, I so I love Chronicles regardless of the sport because I feel like there's so much value in that, but it's also so many rookies, so many numbered cards. It's just, man, they're so fun to open up. Yeah, I love uh, I love Chronicles in all, in all the sports. I, I really enjoy Chronicles, and I know it's kind of, some people like think of it as, as maybe a lower budget product. I don't know, I, I like I like the diversity of it all. I totally agree. And and again, so much Kazmat Chemaev. I, <laughs> yes, I love yeah, it, yeah. I love it, let's go. Same here. I think that that's gonna be a valuable rookie. Definitely. He's, he's, the, he's the guy everybody's chasing for sure. So who, who would you, if you were a speculative collector for is UFC this, cards? Is, is this gold? Oh. oh. <laughs> How about a gold Jorge Masvidal? That's huge, man. That's, that's a be, beautiful that's card. Be numbered out of 10, huh? Oh! oh 10. That's a big card. One of 10. Jorge's our guy, too. Yeah, that's awesome. Card shop owner, huh? Yes, yes. So he owns, he owns a card shop, and I believe he's about to open up a second one. I believe in the Miami area, but legit card guy too. I'm gonna have to top load that bad boy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll we'll get you some some loaders. So Kevin Holland Auto. So you're pulling the gold, but I I have pulled my second ink. There you go. Very nice. Are you ready to blow through yours? Yep. All right. You know what? I need you to open mine. All right. Here we go. So I'm saying the Chronicles, it produces. It's, I know people, a lot of people aren't big on it, but me, I like it a lot. Another Michael Chan. I am all about it. If you've ever opened up like a couple of boxes, you realize the volume of hits you pull out is really impressive. Zhang Wai Lei out of 149. It's nice. not bad. Another Francis Ngannou. How about a blue Michael Chandler? Oh, hey, my Michael that's Chandler. sharp. 25 out of 99. So uh, the question is, if you were speculatively buying somebody's cards in the UFC, who would you want, like, uh, of the new crop of? The new guys, let's see. I, th I think you gotta go with Kazmat. Yeah. Uh, another guy is uh, Ankalaev. I think he's got okay. a good chance to, to make some noise. Uh, be, be the champion one day. I like Michael Chandler as well because I've watched Michael Chandler through his Bellator career, and I just I just think he's great at. I like the way he speaks. I, I like the way he's always ro rocking the American flag. He's a I fun think fighter he's too. He's a fun fighter. He's a dad just like me. So uh, I like I like Michael Chandler, but I'm I'm a George Masvidal guy because I, I trained at American Top Team. I, I always collect the guys that I train with. So Ryan Love Spann, that. Jeff Neal. Uh, Carlos Diego Fajeda, all those guys, they, they're in my stable, so I collect them. Uh, I've got a Poirier collection. If, if, I'm, if I'm like buying into breaks, I'm either buying myself or I'm buying Poirier though. Love it, yeah. I love it. Well, dude, 
UFC 271 coming up February 12th. You got a fight against Perez. I, my money is on you. And uh, man, this has been a real pleasure and I'm so excited for your fight coming up. And uh, go ahead, you've, you've got a, your own YouTube series coming out. That's I, I right. want to make sure you- That's right, so I've, I've recently started my own YouTube uh, channel and it's, it's gonna be mostly sports cards and fist fights. So I will, <laughs> I will be uh, dropping content on fight week, uh, my weight cut, just you know, dropping content, just talking about getting ready for things and, and we'll be putting out videos. And it's very new and I'm trying to figure out things. I'm trying to figure out, uh, I've got a guy that's working for me. Shout out to Ricky the Shooter. Uh, he's helping me with uh, with actually recording everything and then editing editing things as well. And, and we're, we're trying to figure it out as we go. So we're always open to uh, dialogue and please let us know what we can do better and we're, we're trying to, to fix things and cut the fat but uh, I, I recently dropped my five biggest Joe Burrow cards and I, I popped open a box of NFL Immaculate just two days ago hit a huge huge QB auto y'all go check it's out. worth your time I'm not gonna spoil it go check out the video <laughs> and uh, that that cards up on eBay so if you want it it can be yours as well and uh, yeah so just trying to get my YouTube channel kind of off the ground it's something I've wanted to do for a long time I dabble in, in sports comment uh, in, in commentary as well I commentate at uh, local fights I, I, I feel like that's where my future probably lies as far as fighting I mean I'm 32 years old I think I've got another solid five to six years left sure. in me to be competitive, sure. but uh, I'll also be working on these things as well. And yeah, two YouTube videos up right now. I think I have nine subscribers right now. Go so. give them a sub. Hey, shout out to my nine subscribers though. I appreciate you guys. Do you know the the, uh, the YouTube handle? The YouTube handle is Danger Things LLC. Danger Things LLC. We'll, we'll, put, we'll put a link to it in the uh, description of the show too. And do you want to hit your social up too? While we're uh, social media, you can find me at danger underscore caged is my social media. That's Twitter, Instagram. Going to be hitting the TikTok here before Whoa. too long too. Well, I actually secured my danger caged TikTok handle, so haven't released any videos yet. That's going to be something that I'm doing a lot. Of, I'll do a lot of sports card videos on my on my Danger Caged TikTok, and uh, yeah, those are my social medias. You can find me on on Facebook, uh, Matt Danger Schnell, and yeah, follow my journey. I'm, I'm in this thing. I'm a real one. Uh, a real guy, I've got a family. My daughter is adorable, so if you're trying to get your significant other into fighting a little bit, I'm a guy she can root for, I assure you that. I agree, I agree. Brother, thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been a blast. Good luck on the 12th, and uh, make sure to tune in on the 12th to watch his fight too. Thank you guys for watching, we'll see you next time.